Hello and welcome to part three of my August 2018 Blu-ray updates. Yeah, there wasn't supposed to be a part three. Um, I kind of forgot about a few things I picked up in a charity shop. And then I bought a lot of Poundland Blu-rays again. On top of all the other stuff from last time. Now I have been selling digital codes and a, and a few spares that I've had of other Blu-rays. Um, but even still, this is spending a lot of money on Poundland Blu-rays. 40 in total. So <laughs> we're going to run through all of them and I'm going to try and say something about all of them. There are plenty of them in this huge uh, two stacks that I have that I don't have really anything to say about really because I haven't seen them and they don't look like they're going to be that great either and especially knowing that I haven't heard anything about them it means they're probably nothing special anyway but I'll try and get through my logic of picking up each one of them but if you want to try and comment down below saying oh yeah look you're just just throwing all your money at these films that you don't know if you're going to like yeah I, I understand that I, I totally am fully ashamed of myself for these Poundland pickups but I can say that I don't have anything in this update that is as shocking as me picking up Bridget Jones's Diary Part 4 or the Angry Birds movie. So, progress, you know? Um, to why the hell did I pick these up titles in exchange for 40 that I think I have a bit more logical reasoning behind picking up. But before we get to those 40, there are five other Blu-rays that I've gotten from charity shops recently. In fact, uh, I also picked up a DVD set, so let's just, just dive right into it. The DVD set is Twin Peaks, the first season, uh, the special edition, I believe it's called. Uh, and this is an old DVD. Uh, it's an older code, sir, but it still works out. I was about to clear it. And uh, I can tell by the BBFC logo, it's pre-2003. Uh, and this is a really, really nice set with a, a, a slipcover. This, this DVD is dead, wrapped in plastic. And it comes off like that, really, really cool, and uh, has a nice fold out. I'll show you here. It's just a cool kind of ah, oh, you, know, you just you just hear the theme song when you open it up. Dong, 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 dong. Oh, yeah. Third disc is missing. <laughs> now the reason I bought this um, is because it has audio commentaries which David Lynch is not a fan of. This was made without his participation. So there are like uh, directors of certain episodes, production designers, I believe, doing audio commentaries on this release. But there's a couple I haven't got because the discs are missing. Anyway, I'll, I'll try and replace that at some point. I mean, there's not much I can do with a charity shop. I'm certainly not gonna take this back and get a refund. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's in really ratty condition, but you know, it was 50p. And I was walking to work, I looked in the, the window of the charity shop and I saw the face of Laura Palmer, uh, which is upside down, unfortunately, <laughs> calling to me from the shop window, so I went in and grabbed it. Now, charity shop Blu-rays. For so many years I've seen people on Blu-ray.com talking about these, these all these Blu-rays they pick up in charity shops. I'm thinking, what, what charity shops are you going to? I never see Blu-rays in charity shops. If I do, they're kind of outrageously priced or they're just dreck. And there's this one charity shop I found in my local town that is a gold mine of really cool titles. Every now and again I'll go and they'll have a, an absolute pearler in there. So I picked up a few of them and oh, damn, John, I was going to go through all the films I bought from Poundland and all the ones I got from the charity shop and I was going to look them up on Amazon and see how much they'd cost if I bought them brand new uh, from Amazon at the current price. And I'd be willing to bet that, I mean, 40... I'd be willing to bet that it's like two, 300 quids worth of Blu-rays. Um, and this would all amount to less than 50. So anyway, regardless, uh, let's get into it. And, and in order of um, how uh, excited I am about these charity shop pickups, the first one is Film Stars Don't Die in Liverpool. I've seen a trailer for this uh, in the cinema at some point, and I thought it looked really good. It's got a really good cast. Annette Benning, Julie Walters, Jamie Bell... Um, kind of a romance movie, but I, I again, I saw the trailer, I enjoyed it, don't remember too much about it, so I'm just going to dive into into this one as blind as possible, but uh, I do love a good British film, and this one looks like it's just that. Uh, next is one that I've, I've always wanted to own, but never really, um, you know, made the, the push to go out and pick up, and it's Frozen. 
the 52nd uh, Disney classic in the collection. I, I love this film. I only saw it when it came out in 2013, so you know it's been five years since I last saw it, and I don't think I even saw it in high definition, so I'm looking forward to re revisiting it at some point. But for now, it's just going to go in with the Disney collection. I do love my Disney films, and I think this film is a, just a really, really great one. And I think the over-commercialization of this film has really soured people on it, because... Let's be fair, Disney went frozen mental with this film for, for years, and they still are. It, it, they've, they've made so much money off the back of this that it really does feel like a cheap commercial product. But I actually think it's a great film, and the songs are great, I think. So, just one of those things. This one I'm really looking forward to, and this is a brand new Artificial Eye release of a film that uh, has only come out this year. And it is Let the Sunshine In with the slipcover and everything. Uh, and it stars uh, Juliette Binoche and uh, Gerard Depardieu. I don't know if I pronounce those names as, as nicely as I would have liked. But uh, a French film, uh, supposed to be kind of a, a feel-good movie from what I understand. Uh, yeah, an exquisitely judged romantic comedy. Love Juliette Binoche. I think she's a phenomenal actress. I think she's just, just awesome. And everything I see her in, she's just great. So I'm really looking forward to this one. I will watch this one fairly soon, actually, as it's a new movie. Uh, I want to kind of keep on top of watching new films and things, so really happy to see that one in there. Then there's this one, and a plane going overhead, which is just unfortunately unavoidable at this point. Um, this, I, I can't believe I spotted this. I went to the charity shop, they had the same few titles there that I'd seen before, wasn't that interested. They have a few American titles in there actually, but I'm not too um, interested in them. And then I looked down to the kids section, and there was a, there was a single clear Amory case amongst them. And I thought, oh boy, oh boy, what's this? And I picked it out, and I couldn't believe my luck. In fact, this is the one I'm most excited about. Um, this is an animated film that I've never seen before. It's a classic animated film that I've heard many great things about. When the Wind Blows. This is another fairly new release. I think it came out at the beginning of this year. The BFI release, uh, written by Raymond Briggs and directed by Jimmy T. Uh, Murakami. Stacked with special features, you know, you've got a booklet in there, the Blu-ray and the DVD, um, you know, and the story is uh, set, I believe, during World War II, and, you know, I, I've seen I've seen clips of it, I, I've seen bits and pieces of it, and I feel like it's something I'm really going to enjoy uh, to sit down with on a rainy day sometime, but this is one I, I was looking at when it was first announced and thinking of picking it up. Two pound in a charity shop, couldn't believe my luck, an amazing buy. And the next one is the biggest value for money of the entire Blu-ray update. And it's a film I've never seen. I'm, I'm quite looking forward to seeing it. Just didn't catch it when it came out and it got quite a lot of attention. And it is a 4K Ultra HD copy of The Life of Pi. Two pounds. I feel like I'm robbing the place, honestly. Uh, this is an Ang Lee movie. I, it, did it win Best Picture or Best Director? I'm sure Ang Lee won some sort of award. Um, it probably will say on the back, actually. It just says Oscar winner Ang Lee. Maybe not. I know it was nominated for a lot of things, but this has, of course, the the digital code. I don't know if the digital code has been redeemed, but we have the Blu-ray and the 4K disc. Obviously, I'm not going to be using the 4K disc anytime soon, but it seems like one of those films that would greatly benefit from 4K with the visuals and everything. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to checking this one out at some point, but I used to see 4K Blu-ray in a charity shop. I just, I just compulsively picked it up. And speaking of compulsively picking things up, let's get stuck into the 40, I believe it's 40 pound land Blu-ray titles. Without any further ado. Up first we have Rupture, starring Numi Rapace. Again, no idea if that's how you properly pronounce her name, but I really like her as an actress a lot. So, you know, I'd, I'd seen this in Poundlands before, but I finally decided to just grab it and pick it up while I was buying so many others. And actually, some of these have been outsourced. <laughs> I've been kind of like <laughs> hiring helpers in a way. I had Connie pick up uh, like at least eight of these from a few different towns she was in. And Graham over at Man vs. Film, uh, thanks again, man. He picked up, I think, six for me up in uh, up in his neck of the woods so and, and sent them over, so that was great. Because there's been so many titles out there in the Blue Rand, the Blue Rand, I'll leave that one for free, <laughs> the, the Poundland Blu-ray scene, that, uh, you know, if I hear someone has, has got what I'm looking for in another storm, like, can you pick it up for me? And my White Whale, 
was one I've been looking for the most and I, I managed to find a copy so I'm really excited about that one too. But Rupture looks like a kind of sci-fi thriller. Again, I don't want to kind of just read the whole thing or, try, or get too deep into looking into it and stuff, but uh, this is something that, um, you know, it's just a film to put on at some point, you know, and I don't know whenever. I'll be completely honest with you. I'll be completely honest with you. I know there are some films in this stack I probably will never watch. There was one film I bought about seven years ago, Bunraku, I think. Uh, I thought, oh, that looks good, and it's only £1.50. Never watched it. I think I sold it and, and got, like, 25p for it. So, you know, it just is what it is. I have an absolute sickness, and I do need help. So, again, if you guys uh, have got any help in that regard, then then please send me a message and, uh, and get me in touch with your, your local therapist. This one I have heard nothing about but I grabbed it based on the actors. A lot of these pickups are based on the actors and how much I enjoy them. Dog Eat Dog, starring Nicolas Cage and Willem Dafoe. Just seems like an amazing combination, much like that film with John Travolta and Robert De Niro that was really quite terrible, but so entertaining in its own way. So I'm hoping that's kind of the same with this, but this is actually, I think, directed by Paul Schrader. It was, so that intrigues me as well. But Dog Eat Dog, that's one right there. This is a film that uh, is kind of infamous for many reasons. Daredevil, starring Ben Affleck. Never seen it. And I would quite like to see it and see what all the fuss is about. Loaded with special features. That's another thing. that A lot of these Blu-rays have so many special features. So if I do end up enjoying the movies, there'll be a wealth of kind of behind-the-scenes stuff to get into. Uh, next up, we have Goosebumps. Uh, also has the 3D disc, starring Jack Black. I'm intrigued to see it. I, I grew up loving the the, go, the, the Goosebumps books um, and, you know, devoured them as a kid. There was uh, Say Cheese and Die, the, uh, was it The Blob or something? There was, a, there, was a, there was a Monster Blob series that went for like four books I really enjoyed. I, I just loved those, those books. I have no idea what the movie does with that, if it kind of adapts loads of different stories. But I'm really intrigued actually to see what it's all about. It's a kid's movie, Jack Black. I'm sure it's a lot of fun. Oh, this one I'm quite happy about adding to the collection, actually, because I have seen it. New Decade, New Rules, Scream 4. Saw this one in the cinema um, before I'd seen the second and third Scream movies, but I've since seen all of them now, and I really love the Scream franchise. I really like this one as well. In fact, this might be uh, maybe my second favorite after the first one, perhaps. It's been a while since I've seen the second one. The third one's okay, it's enjoyable, but I really loved Scream 4 and how it kind of uh, continued to build on what Wes Craven was doing with the franchise to begin with, or the original movie to begin with, and the, the meta aspects of it. I think this is a really smart and clever film, and I really, really enjoyed it in the cinema, so uh, looking forward to watching it again at some point. This one stars one of my favorite comedic actors, So I Married an Axe Murderer, starring Michael Myers. Mike Myers. Does he prefer Mike? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe if you get on, on kind of, you know, good friendly terms with him. This doesn't have any special features, and it's a film from 1993. So this is like proper Wayne's World era, Mike Myers. And I don't know anything about it other than that it's obviously a comedy, and I'm, I'm all in on checking this out at some point. A Mike Myers comedy from the 90s I've never seen. Yeah, all, all, in, on, all in on that one. I'm really excited to check that out. Um, I'm going to leave this one till near the end because I'm really excited about it actually. And maybe this one too. Maybe I should just kind of like stockpile the ones I have interesting things to say about. Uh, so this one, uh, I believe came from Graham actually. Uh, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs 2. A nice little slipcover. I think most of the Sony titles have their slipcovers intact and stuff. Uh, I really enjoy these movies, the first and second one. They're really good animated films. Uh, certainly not something I'd pay a lot of money for, but for one pound, I would gladly add it to the collection. Just thought this was a really enjoyable, fun movie, and uh, enjoyed it a lot, actually. Not fantastic, but just really enjoyable. This one, again, I'll put to the side. Uh, this one I saw in the cinema in 2011, and it is Tower Heist. I really enjoyed this film. I don't think it has a very good reputation, but it's a really fun comedy film. You've got Ben Stiller, you've got Eddie Murphy, you've got Matthew Broderick, uh, a really good cast. You've also got Tia Leone in there. You've got um, uh, Casey Affleck, who I didn't even remember being in the film, but I remember his character now that I see him on the cover. 
I just thought it was a really fun little comedy movie, you know, and it felt like a, a return to form for Eddie Murphy. He was so funny in this. And I thought maybe it would be the start of a kind of renaissance for him uh, as a comedic actor in films, but uh, I don't think it really... I don't know, I don't even know what Eddie Murphy is really doing these days, but I really enjoyed Tower Heist, so I'm really happy to have it in my collection. This one I'll put to the side again as well. Uh, this one I know nothing about. Runner Runner. Ben Affleck. Gemma Arterton. Justin Timberlake. And this one just looks like a kind of you know, kind of a thriller, kind of a, a cool, slick, stylish movie that I'll probably never watch, but maybe one day. Uh, this is, I'm sure this is a Coen Brothers movie, yes, it's a Coen Brothers movie, starring George Clooney and Catherine Zeta-Jones in Tolerable Cruelty. Seen bits of this on TV when I was a kid, I think, or a teenager I would have been, for sure. And uh, I remember enjoying the, the snippets of it that I saw. So uh, I'm looking forward to watching this in full. This one will, will definitely get watched at some point. Uh, <laughs> I, I really don't know why this one ended up in the basket, but... Dead in Tombstone, starring Danny Trejo and uh, Mickey Rourke, Anthony Michael Hall. Based on the actors, might be a fun time, might not be. Let's see how, how long this is. An hour and 40 minutes. It's a good kind of hour and a half movie to throw on at some point. This is, I think, a, a different copy than the one I got before. The Amazing Spider-Man 2. This is the 3D special edition, I believe with a nice slipcover and a clear case. I do enjoy these films. This one isn't the best one, but uh, it is nice to kind of, you know, and I, I said many years ago, and I think I even said in a video recently, that I would never really um, pay money to put these films into my collection, but for a pound, I think I'm okay. And I think it has the digital download code, which might have expired actually, but if I can kind of sell the, down the digital download codes for some of these, then I'm kind of just getting a few free movies for the collection. And don't get me wrong, there's many of these that may end up being sold at some point, but uh, the, the, the reason I got so many, I didn't even get into that, is that I went to a store and it was absolutely packed. It, I just felt like I was in a wonderland, you know, I was just like, I was like Homer Simpson in, the, in Candyland, just kind of skipping along, you know, so many Blu-rays. Uh, this one I've never seen before, Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer, haven't seen this, all the first one. I'm intrigued, I like superhero movies, and I've never seen these ones, so I'll obviously have to get the first one and maybe do like a double bill or something. Very intrigued to see it. This one, just again on the strength of the actors more than anything, I mean this just looks like a, a kind of a straight drama, really. Uh, I don't know anything about the plot, but it has a fantastic cast. Um, it has... Uh, ben Affleck, Kevin Costner, Tommy Lee Jones, and it might this might be one of those movies where it's like Kevin Costner, Tommy Lee Jones, and then they're in the movie for two minutes, but, you know, yeah, I'll give it a look at some point. This is eh, kind of a weak one, to be honest, but I was I was kind of intrigued. I really am an animation enthusiast, even the, even the, the, the 3D, you know, animation these days. This is Rio 2. Haven't seen the first one. Again, this has a digital code, so maybe I could sell that on. But, uh, you know, uh, with, with Connie's passion for digital animation as well, it's something that we can enjoy together watching these kinds of movies. So just, just grabbed it and threw it in the basket. And then finally, we're at the end of the first stack. Tying in with Daredevil, we have Elektra. Never seen it again. Uh, haven't seen Daredevil, so I wouldn't even know if I enjoy the character of Elektra, uh, played by Jennifer Garner, but... Why not? I'm sure Connie would enjoy checking this out at some point. Now let me move down the second stack. And we'll continue this madness. Here we go. Another example of a sequel, even though I don't own the first one or have ever seen it. It's a horror movie. I still know what you did last summer. No, no comment on that one. <laughs> this is a good film. Uh, another one I would have never thought about buying, but for a pound. Uh, I definitely wouldn't say no to adding it to the collection. Warm Bodies. This is uh, an interesting zombie film where we have Nicholas Holt playing a, a zombie, kind of, who, um, you know, kind of has a romance with this girl. It, it's a very strange film. I, I did enjoy it. I didn't love it. I thought it, it kind of, at, at times, its own concept kind of got ahead of itself, maybe, or kind of just uh, overrode the movie a little bit. I don't know. There's something about the actual concept that seemed to hold it back from being a complete film, if that makes sense. I don't know. But I did enjoy it, and, and Connie really liked it, so, you know, we'll watch it again someday. 
This one, I, I actually picked up because there was someone on Blu-ray.com who was looking for this, and now they're no longer looking for it. So, if anyone wants this, actually, I, I don't think I will watch this anytime soon. I'm sure it's a very good film, um, but uh, Victorian kind of period drama is not my kind of thing. Far from the Madding Crowd, which I'm sure has been done before in another film I've seen. Uh, another Blu-ray for an older film of this, so I'm assuming it's adapted from something. I'm not sure, I really don't know. We have Kerry Mulligan, who's a great actress, Michael Sheen, great actor. Sure, it's very good, but uh, if anyone, anyone does want this, then I'd be happy to kind of sell that, that one on, because I wasn't really keen on it. This one is actually pre-owned, and apparently fully refurbished. I just wanted, really wanted to see this when it first came out. It's Anne Hathaway in one day. I'm kind of just intrigued to see her British accent, actually. I remember seeing the trailers for this and wanting to go and see it, but it never never happened. And I do like a good romantic uh, uh, drama, you know, slash comedy. I don't know if there is many comedic elements to it, but uh, I do like romance films, so I, I thought I'd grab that one. This is another one which was purely, as soon as I saw the actors' names, or actresses' names, actually, definitely getting that, we have The Awakening. Rebecca Hall, Imelda Staunton, picking it up, absolutely. Oh, I'm looking forward to seeing this one at some point. This just, it just, it looked mental from from the very first trailer I saw. It is Keanu Reeves in 47 Ronin. If you've seen it, let me know what you think about it. And the same can be said for all of these, but there's so many films in this update that I don't want to overwhelm you, but I'd be quite intrigued to hear what people think of that one. I do love Keanu Reeves, I have to say. This is another one. It looks like a kind of young adult kind of sci-fi kind of movie, The Giver. And, uh, you know, I see Jeff Bridges, I see Meryl Streep, Alexander Skarsgård, and I'm like, yeah, I'll give that a look, or, or I'll buy it and never watch it. Ooh, ooh, this one's cool. I'll put that to the side as well. Uh, this one, Graham, uh, over at Man vs. Film, actually told me he really enjoyed this. This is Stretch, with an incredible tagline, Shift Happens. Uh, Patrick Wilson, again, I, I love Patrick Wilson, so I just thought, I'll get that. Um... Looked on the back, it just looked like a kind of a, a bit of an action movie, so yeah, sure, I'll throw it in there. <laughs> uh, this, I believe, was the first film Christian Bale did, or th that came out after The Dark Knight Rises, and everyone's like, ooh, his first film since The Dark Knight, you know, or The Dark Knight Rises, The Flowers of War. I, I think Christian Bale is one of the, the great actors of our time, really, and so, uh, and it's from the director of Hero who is, um, what is his name, Zhang Yimou, who Brian Lomax did a video on for my Asian cinema season last year. So um, based on his kind of, um, the, 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 the regard that he holds this director in, I don't think he included this 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 film in the video, but I'm, I'm intrigued to see more of that guy's work. And I did think Hero was a fantastic film. So Christian Bale, Zhang Yimou, definitely intrigued to see that. Uh, this one I'll put to his side as well. Uh, and that one, actually. Uh, oops, sorry. Hit the microphone there. Ho hope the uh, the sound disturbance wasn't too much. Uh, this, uh, I don't know too much about. I know it's a big, loud, blockbuster action film. Battle Los Angeles. Again, has anyone seen this one? What, what do you think? I think this one stars Aaron Eckhart, if I... Yes. But I'm not sure if it's more of a sci-fi thing. Michelle Rodriguez, that's cool. I, I quite like her. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think me and Connie will probably watch this on you know, like a, a weekend or something, but I don't know. I'm not, not too sure about this one. But, you know, I, I still picked it up. <laughs> uh, this, again, based on the actress involved, who is, um, what is her name? Let me just get it right, because I, I get her mixed up with someone else. And where is it? Uh, Vera Farmiga, who I think is just, I, I really love everything I see her in. She has this kind of an interesting quality to her as an actress, and it is Orphan. So you know, I'm always looking to expand my horror horizon, so grab that one. I'll put this to the side too. Uh, this film I really enjoyed. Um, never thought I'd pick it up, but for a pound, I, I definitely was glad to buy it. Into the Woods from Disney. Uh, really fun musical. I'm not usually a musical guy, but I, I really enjoyed this one when it came out. There's a lot of Oscar buzz of Meryl Streep, which was ridiculous. If you see her in the film, she's good, you know, but Oscar winning performance, not really, you know, it's, it's nothing really stand out, but I enjoyed it quite a bit. And it's kind of odd to see like Meryl Streep, Emily Blunt, Anna Kendrick, Chris Pine, Johnny Depp, and James Corden. <laughs> you know, I just think about Gavin and Stacey and it's kind of odd, but I enjoyed that film quite a bit. So there we go. 
This one, I, 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 I didn't even. I, I started reading the back. Of the, I started reading the back of the cover, and I thought, "Ooh, I'm in. I'm in on this one." Uh, it's a BBC, uh, I guess, mini series. It says it's like four hours long, so perhaps it was like a two, a three or four episode uh, mini series on the BBC, and it is from Darkness. And I really like the actress here, um, Anne Marie Duff who um, I first saw in the, the original Shameless, and I thought she was very good in that. Uh, this is some kind of murder d detective mystery thing, so I'm kind of all in on this. I, I really um, want to watch this soon, actually. So this is kind of something I've never heard of and definitely want to grab. Two Blu-rays um, to cover the four hours of this miniseries, so for a quid, absolutely. This, I, I think I might sell, I'm not sure, I'm not too interested in it, but it was a nice edition. It is Rise of the Foot Soldier Extreme Extended Edition, the Steelbook version. Uh, I think it's a, it's a gangster movie, yeah, 2007. Uh, in, in 2007, the British gangster genre was redefined with this film, based on the true story of uh, the brutal triple murders in 1995, Introducing viewers to the underworld of the Essex gangland. Yeah, not too sure if this is kind of fully up my alley or anything. So if anyone really wants this, maybe let me know. But, uh, you know, I'd be intrigued to check it out. But, you know, it's a nice steel book. So I thought perhaps I could pick it up for someone else who might want it. Uh, or I may watch it myself at some point. I won't. <laughs> and now we get to kind of a, a nice little stack here of things that uh, I, I have seen before. Or I'm really, really especially glad to kind of add to my collection. The first one is a really good film from a few years ago called Wild, um, starring Reese Witherspoon, a true story of a woman called, uh, was her second name Strayed? Yeah, Cheryl Strayed, this woman who kind of went on this this long hike, and, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's breaking down the film into, into a very uh, vague sentence, but it's a really, really great film. Laura Dern was fantastic in this as well, playing uh, Cheryl's mother. And yeah, just really damn good film. And uh, yeah, one I, I would definitely watch again. So I was glad to pick that one up. This one I didn't love. I, I kind of, I want to give it another shot at some point. But the main reason I picked it up actually was purely for the special features. We get two Blu-rays and it is Exodus, uh, Gods and Kings from Ridley Scott starring Christian Bale, um, Joel Edgerton, who I love, Sigourney Weaver. Really good cast, kind of a biblical uh, epic. But uh, the second disc has um, Keepers of the Covenant, Making Exodus, Gods and Kings, which I believe is like a, a big feature-length documentary. I think that that might have been made um, by the guy who, who does a lot of Ridley Scott's uh, making of as well, who's a, a really great uh, documentarian of, of you know, behind-the-scenes movie making. So I kind of purely picked this up for the kind of academic side of it, of just seeing more Ridley Scott behind-the-scenes stuff. Uh, but it was a film that I kind of had a mixed... Uh, response to when I first saw it. Uh, this is uh, another one that uh, Graham sent over, and it is The Purge, which I really, really enjoyed when it came out. Uh, I really like the second one, actually. I like the, taking the idea of The Purge, which we saw in this first film, uh, in a contained location, and then in the second one, we expand to the kind of city. But the third one, I just thought, was really just not good. It was Election Night or something like that. Ugh, really not a good film, and I'm not too keen to check out the fourth one based on that, but I probably will at some point. I think it's an intriguing idea. It's a very scary idea of this one day of the, the year where all crime, or, or one half day of the year, I think it's 12 hours, where all crime is, is, is kind of rendered obsolete and you can do whatever you want to kind of purge, you know, this, this purging of society, of humanity. It's a very deep an interesting idea, I think. If you if you were to take like one of the great directors, you know, back in the seventies or something, and have them make this concept, I think it could be like a like a you know like an all time classic. But you know, it is a, you know still kind of a kind of just a horror movie. When it isn't too you know deep or you know, has too much depth. But I, I did really enjoy it, and I love Ethan Hawke. So um, yeah, really enjoyed The Purge, and uh, definitely. I'm a fan of adding it to my collection. This one. This is interesting for me because it's a Melissa McCarthy movie. And I have an interesting history with Mel Melissa McCarthy. Um, now we used to go out together. And <laughs> the way I set that up just seemed like it was something personal. No, an interesting history because um, it was in Bridesmaids. I first properly was introduced to her. And I, I thought she was kind of funny. But maybe a bit too over the top. And then just continually wasn't that amused by her in films, in, in Ghostbusters, didn't really like her that much, 
you know, things like that. And then I saw her in St. Vincent, which is a really great film, and, and she's playing the straight man role in that, or the straight woman role in that film, and she's really good, you know. And then I saw this year, Life of the Party, which just looked like dreck. But we watched it, and I loved it. Like, I really enjoyed it. Like, it's a silly, goofy comedy that isn't that great by any stretch of the imagination, and certainly doesn't have any kind of <laughs> sense of reality to it, where this woman is... Uh, going to college at the same, you know, uh, university as her daughter, but it was just really sweet and endearing and enjoyable and I kind of really liked it So <laughs> I actually want to check this out and maybe some more of her other films actually and it is Spy Which I saw the trailers for and thought it looked like Drex. So, you know, maybe I'll be surprised with this But it does have a good cast Jason Statham, Rose Byrne, Jude Law, you know, it could be a lot of fun actually So I, I'm, this is another one that we might watch pretty soon this is a great film. I think this is really underrated. It, it got kind of uh, thrown away quite easily, I thought, um, far too quickly when it came out. It is Southpaw, boxing movie with Jake Gyllenhaal, Rachel McAdams. A really powerful film, I thought. I, I don't know why it got such a, I wouldn't say a trashing, but it, it people just said, oh, it's oh, too sentimental, or oh, just too unrealistic or whatever. It just didn't seem to get any credit at all. And it was when Jake Gyllenhaal was really building this incredible momentum coming off of Prisoners and an Enemy and um, Nightcrawler, you know, and this seemed like the next step of this kind of massive resurgence in his career as a, an incredible actor, I thought. And he's great in this, but it just didn't seem to pick up any traction. And I think that's a shame, but I, I thought it was a great film and uh, definitely one I, I wanted to own. This is another film, actually, that I, I was kind of really disappointed in the public's reception to. It's from a director I love, and, uh, you know, it just it, this is a film that is really divisive. A lot of people just don't get on with it at all. But um, I loved it, and it's Chappie from um, Neil Blomkamp. And I love uh, Elysium and Chappie, particularly. More than District 9. I think District 9 might be a better film than, than these two, but... I really loved this film. I, I loved Hugh Jackman in kind of an over-the-top hammy villain role. You know, it's cool to see Sigourney Weaver in there, but mainly it's the, uh, I want to get his name right, Charlto Copley, who plays Chappie. There, there's just something, this is just a film you would never see anywhere else. It's so unique. Um, I forget the, the band's name, that kind of, the South African band that's in this film. I mean, I, I get why the film is divisive. I mean, it's so out there when you get to those two characters. It's just... Um, but, but I love that about it. I love that it's just, no one would ever think to make that film, you know, and I love seeing something that is just so wildly different from anything you've seen before. Yes, it has elements of other movies that deal with robots and that kind of thing, and there's certainly a little bit of short circuit in there, I think, but it's done in such, painted on such a different canvas that I love, and uh, this has got a bonus disc of special features, which I can't wait to get stuck into. Uh, this is another one sent to me by Graham. Thank you again, man. So I was really happy to get this one for a pound. Just love Chappie. This one I haven't seen, and I really should have, because I'm a big fan of the actor involved, Patch Adams with Robin Williams. Um, I, I vaguely know the story, but it's, it's, it's one that I, I just want to dive back in. I've seen uh, little clips here and there, but uh, never the full thing. This one has quite a lot of special features, actually. A making of documentary, deleted scenes, outtakes, a... Uh, director's commentary, so that's really cool, but I mainly just want to see the film and I know a lot of people throughout my whole life actually who have loved this movie So that's kind of high on the list of ones to watch out of this stack Well these two stacks man. This is a long update video. I'm sorry. So three more to go this one I, I'm, I'm really happy about as well because it ties in with uh, One of the films I got recently hang on a second. I'll just uh show you for visual purposes in case you didn't see that previous update i got men in black which was a favorite of mine from childhood that i haven't seen in probably at least 15 years and i mentioned in that video that i've never seen the second men in black movie so here we have men in black 2. I i'm really looking forward to this people say that it's really bad and kind of the weakest one of the three i love the third one so even if this isn't very good i i, I at least need to bridge that trilogy gap for my Excuse me, I'll leave that one in for free as well. At least I didn't burp out loud. Um, I need to bridge that trilogy gap, so... Nice little slipcover as well, which goes quite nicely and, and uniformly with the uh, the first one. That looks really nice. I have the steelbook of the third movie, so I don't need to get the uh, the other release of the third one. But uh, yeah, really happy uh, to, to be able to check that one out in high definition on Blu-ray for the first time. 
And we have two more, and these are, I think, definitely the two ones I'm the most happy about. This one, uh, Paranorman, just jump right into it. I love this movie. I love stop motion animation. I love the stuff that Laika is doing. I still need to see Coraline, I really do. But I loved this film when it came out in 2012, I believe. And I've always wanted to pick it up. And to get it for a pound is just like, ah, awesome. Just so, so great. Uh, great price for a great movie. And then just breaking that down. Breaking that down. These are movies that cost millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. Just thousands of hours of thousands of people's lives just pouring all of their heart and creative energy into making a film like this. And I'm paying one pound to own it and be and to be able to enjoy it for the rest of my life. Uh, when you break down that, it really is a steal. But this is such a, an incredible film. I, I love how, on the surface, it, it seemed like kind of just a, a spooky, kind of goofy, you know, horror-ish, um, you know, comedy, stop-motion animated film. But at the end, there's a real gut punch of of something really emotional, I think, that just I wasn't expecting at all. And I can't wait to relive that and see it again for the first time since it came out in the cinemas. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, we're at the 45th, I believe, Blu-ray, the final one of the update. And this was my white whale. I couldn't believe that it was in Poundland. We even have a nice slipcover. It is Better Call Saul Season 1 with a nice slipcover. Absolutely loaded to the gills with special features. We got three discs, I believe, ten episodes. Uh, what a show! What a show! Uh, the the fourth season has just started, which is incredible. So this is a perfect time for me to pick this up. I was thinking about maybe waiting until like a complete series set comes out in a few years, and maybe I still will do that because I think I owned a couple of Blu-rays of Breaking Bad that I sold once I got the big barrel box set, but. I can't wait to see the special features on this one, and probably I might revisit the the Mike episode, the Mike origin episode from this series, which was just, oh, just, no words, just an amazing episode of television. I think Jonathan Banks should have won all the awards for that performance. It was just great, and I love the character of Mike, and I love what um, Bob Odenkirk has done with his performance of Jimmy McGill and Saul Goodman in this show. Because, you know, you look at, ba uh, at Breaking Bad and, you know, Saul's a fun character. And there are a few serious moments, but he really shows his, uh, his chops as an actor in this series. And not just the first series, it just gets better and better, you know. And it's been years since I've seen this now, so I might actually just watch this again once the fourth se season has ended. Uh, this has audio commentaries on every episode. There's, like, deleted scenes. Um, you know, all sorts of stuff, a gag reel, a couple of episodes are uncensored, and yeah, I, I genuinely think this is, you know, as good as Breaking Bad, it is that good. I think people are writing it off, I know some people who still have never seen it, because they think it's just kind of a, a you know, comedy spin-off. It is a comedy, it is very funny, but it is, it is just as dramatic, and just as entertaining, and just as expertly shot, and performed, and written as Breaking Bad. And so, for me, this is easily the most exciting one of the bunch from Poundland, anyway. So, there we go. <laughs> that has been my humongous part three, my unexpected part three. An unexpected journey to multiple Poundlands. And, uh, and yeah, so that's about it. I, I should stop blathering on now and, uh, and end the video. But thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey, all right by me. <laughs> Apart from the fact he throws cans of Carlin into a tree. <laughs> yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, he's really cool. But he's not quite as cool as you. Cause...